Hi right, guys, Buildzoid here. We haven't done one of these in ages, have we? Um, and by we, I mean me, because there's obviously nobody else working on this stuff. Anyway, this right here is uh, one of the few GTX 1080 Ti's I haven't done yet. Um, so, yeah, let, let's just get into it. So this is from Palette. I do believe that this PCB is also used on the... Like, Gainward has a bunch of cards which are, like, the same cooler shroud, different colors. That's probably going to be the same PCB. So anyway, let's get right into it. Is it uh, right into it? It is a GTX 1080 Ti, which means there's a uh, basically we need uh, the following voltages. There has to be a V core. Um, there has to be a V mem. Uh, there has to be a 1.8 volts rail because the GDDR5X won't run without VPP, and uh, Nvidia cards have a uh, um, what's it called? Uh, like well, the BIOS runs on 1.8 volts. And then finally, there's a one volt uh, PEX or PLL rail, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, so yeah, let, let's just go around the card and find all of those. And I am changing up the the scheme a bit. So down here, this this is obviously the PLL. The most of that, like the actual switching element, is on the back, as you can kind of tell. Um, everything we have here is just an inductor and some capacitors. So the the switching element is on the actual back of the card, but eh, I, I can't be bothered switching layers today, so deal with it. <laughs> We're not going to check those out. Plus, I can't get the part numbers for them, and this rail is so low power. It jet well, actually, no, I have heard of people manage, like, uh, it, it is actually possible to break this thing on liquid nitrogen. For everybody else, this rail might as well not exist. Um, so that's that one, you know, that, that's one, that's that one taken care of. This right here, I suspect it's 1.8 volts because it's pretty significant. Um, and it's by the memory and it's kind of in a convenient place to do both the BIOS 1.8 volts and the memory 1.8 volts. So I'm going to say that's the 1.8 volts rail. Um, so that's that one off the list. VMAM, this one, obviously. It's one, like the second largest VRM on the entire card. So that's your VMAM up there. Um, and then V-Core is this beast uh, right over here. Um, and it, it's it's quite the beast because they literally had to put the phases in two separate rows. Now, um, interesting thing about these chips right here, these are power stages. And these don't normally run on 12 volts, which means... Uh, and these ones here specifically, these are... Uh, these are uh, Vichy Semiconductor... These are SIC uh, 632s, um, so these are 50 amp power stages, and these definitely don't run on 12 volts. These run on 5 volts, which leads me to believe that this right here is a 5 volt LDO. So, yeah, um, or that's not the or that's not 5 volts. It's 1.8, and this is 5 volts. But that doesn't really make that much sense to me because uh, power stages pull less power than memory. Uh, the VPP rail for the memory should pull. So this is probably five volts for the actual VRM over here. I'm not sure why they decided to put that LDO all the way over there, but without the card in hand, kind of hard to, uh, you know, make 100% certain of those things. Anyway, let's get right into it. The VCore VRM is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, phases. Now, a few people might be wondering why these are missing. That's probably done for uh, current balancing reasons. So normally when you see this, um, you can kind of see how this, like um, from the from the cap mask here, you can see that's plus and that's ground. So th this pad right here, that's a ground pad. Um, and this plus, and like you can see that this power plane right here is like not connected so there's a pretty good chance that this pad actually leads to the PCIe slot down here. That's where it's probably pulling its 12 volts from. Um, and so the reason why that's not hooked up is basically because they decided that they don't actually want to pull core power from the PCIe slot for that uh, for that phase. And instead they went with this pad, which probably pulls off of one of the eight, one of the two eight pins. So basically, 
when you see um, cards with like missing power stage uh, positions, a lot of the time it's just a matter of uh, doing 12 volt power source balance uh, balancing where it's like, uh, do we want to pull it off the PCIe or do we want to pull it off of the uh, actual power connectors? And here I think they decided power connectors. I'm not 100% certain because I don't have the card in hand. But if you kind of look at the... Actually, this is interesting. So this looks like you have one power plane right here. You can kind of see. And it ends down here. Um, and then you have another power plane right here. And uh, these all look like... Yeah, okay. This all looks like one power plane. You can sort of see the trace layout. Sort of. Um, so yeah, I think these four phases are all hanging off of this 8-pin right there. Um, and then these two maybe as well. But anyway, basically it's just done for power power balancing. So it, does, like, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, uh, at least not in my opinion, it doesn't really matter that much. So yeah, that's just why that's done and why, why you'll see some cards with like unoccupied components. Uh, often pa times you'll also see like actual just straight up like bridges on some cards where like they can uh, change, uh, like they'll have, instead of like literally using the power stages for doing the decision of where the 12 volt comes from, they, they uh, bridge the power planes differently. So they'll have like a, like either zero ohm resistors or, uh, or uh, Asus does this thing where they literally just have like the, some exposed copper and there's just a solder bridge over that. And it's like really small gap. And if they do solder over it, then it connects the power planes. If they don't, then it doesn't. So yeah, that that's kind of that. Um, Vcore VRM is a 12 phase. That does mean this is using a doubling scheme. It's using these chips right here. These are 8116s. Well, NCP 811 sixes uh six twos and that gives away that the voltage controller is an eight ncp part as well um it's on the back of the card and it should be right here i think based on the fact that we have a whole bunch of passive components there as well as these guys so yeah the voltage controller should be in this area again on the back of the board i can't be bothered flipping layers so you're not going to see it. NCP81274. Uh, this is a rather common voltage controller for NVIDIA cards. It's actually pretty good. Um, it goes up to eight phases. Uh, uh, yeah, up to eight phases uh, output here. You can obviously see that it's running in six phase. And then times two thanks to the NCP81162s. Uh, these things offer very basic current balancing. Um, and by very basic, I mean, uh, basically, if one of the phases starts, like, ramping more and more current into itself, it'll intent, like, it'll drop to the phase that runs less current. So, if you have, like, 50 amp, like, if, um, if you start with, like, a situation where, uh, phase one is at 30, and phase two here is at 25, and then phase one ramps to, like, 40 amps, and this one's still at 25, then what the NCP81162 will do is it'll skip one of the PWM impulses for this phase, and so it'll drop from like 40 amps to say 20, uh, say it'll drop to like 30, and then this one will climb up to like 35, because one of them just skipped a PWM, uh, was uh, skipped for a PWM signal. So it can do some very basic current balancing, um, and it gets you closer to having like a real 12 phase in terms of voltage regulation. Because if you had a true 12 phase, then each phase would be current balanced by the voltage controller itself, except no, nobody makes voltage controllers that complex. Though Intercell does have doublers that can extend duty cycles and shorten duty cycles. So those can do some actually serious current balancing, but these things just do the... Uh, we're gonna skip like we're gonna skip one of the power uh, one of the phases if it starts going way higher current than the other one. So yeah, that's that's kind of the control scheme here. The NCP one two seven four is actually there. There's a really detailed public data sheet for that thing. So if you're interested in like if you have this card and you want to vault mod it, which uh, in in car like in the current situation. 
which I honestly don't know why you do that. There's like better cards to go for LN2, but hey, if you just want to mod a card for no reason, this thing's really easy because the data sheet for this thing is fully public. So I'll drop that down in the, uh, I'll drop a link to that down in the description below because it is really like, it has all the details and maybe I'll do a video on like reading through that data sheet and point out the various ways you can do things one day. But anyway, um, Control scheme, voltage controller, how long is this video? Eh, just, you know, the usual IHOC length. Let's talk power capabilities. So, this is on a GTX 1080 Ti. Um, so, for the core, you're going to be looking on, uh, say, air cooling. You're going to be looking at, well, stock is uh, 1.06 volts and about 1825 megahertz though admittedly this thing will actually boost significantly above that so i'm just pulling numbers for like a f uh, founders edition to have a like low uh like common reference point for everything um so stock you'd be looking at 1.06 volts and uh 200 amps and this VRM for that current a kind of current and voltage, you're looking at about 15 watts of heat output. That's assuming 500 kilohertz switching frequency um, because the data sheet doesn't go below that and 5 volts drive voltage because these don't run on anything other than 5 volts. I mean, technically you can push them all the way to 5.5, but it doesn't really do anything uh, in terms of efficiency. Or you can drop them all the way down to like 4 volts and below that they don't work. Um, and again, doesn't do anything for efficiency. So really, you'd run them on 5 volts um, if you're being reasonable. So, yeah, especially because if you exceed 5.5 volts drive voltage on these, that actually puts them at risk of being damaged. So you'd want to run them on 5 volts so you have that safety margin up top uh, for them not to get damaged. So stock, you'd be looking at about 15 watts of heat output on the VRM, which considering how much space this thing takes up is actually like, this would probably, like, this should have no problem cooling itself given some airflow. Um, then if you're on air, like, ambient uh, cooling systems like water cooling or, uh, and I can't spell today, ambient, uh, you know, cooling systems, so air cooling or water cooling, and you're going to be around 1.093 volts because that's where the uh, NVIDIA so like the NVIDIA software won't let you go past that. Now, depending on the power limit situation, you might be pushing 250 or uh, 300 amps, like somewhere in between that. Um, and clock core clock is going to be between, say, 1950 megahertz. That would be like a trash tier card, like complete f silicon f lottery failure. Um, and a good card would be like 2100 plus. Um, and it would still be in this kind of current draw range. So for the low end of that, you'd be looking at about 23 watts of heat output. Um, and the top of that at around 30 watts of heat output, which really that's not that bad considering that this card isn't supposed to be some like Uber LN2 card. That's actually a really respectable like uh, power draw figures. So um, yeah, that's really not that bad and not much to complain about there it's not the most efficient by by any more uh by any stretch of the imagination but for the w when cards were still reasonable in terms of price points this vrm was like respectable for what it is so and it still is it's just all the gpu prices have gone bloody insane which is why i haven't done a pcb breakdown in ages because it's just bloody pointless when all the cards aren't affordable um, anyway, uh, so that's for ambient. Now, if you throw a GTX 1080 Ti on liquid nitrogen, uh, things start getting very, very hot. Uh, cards get very, very power hungry. So, for liquid nitrogen, you should be averaging, say, if for, say, okay, LN2, 1.5 volts, um, assuming it scales to that, that may or may not actually happen. 240, uh, 2400 megahertz, because that's actually where most uh, regular 1080 Ti's top out. There's like, there's something really special about like the Kingpin and the Hall of Fame cards, uh, other than the actual ridiculous VRM on them. There's something that those cards do that like a lot of other cards don't do because there's very few 1080 Ti's out there that do 2600 megahertz or even anything above 2500 megahertz. That's pretty much just the Kingpin and the Light uh, and the Hall of Fame that do that. Um, and then like even, even like the Strix doesn't really, 
uh, go past two and a half gigahertz. And then there's the Kingpin and the Hall of Fame where those cards have hit as high as 2700. So, you know, for this thing, I'd assume you'd probably max out around here, possibly with less voltage, because again, I'm not sure if it'll scale properly. Um, that seems to be part of the secret sauce that EVGA used on the Kingpin edition, that it scales to like pretty ridiculous voltages, and same goes for the Hall of Fame. But 1.5 volts, 2400 megahertz, you'd probably be looking at around 420 amps of current consumption, um, though on average. So there, the peaks might be actually significantly higher than that. And you'd be looking at about a 60 watts of heat, VRM heat output, which uh, given enough airflow and maybe some actual heat sinks on the VRM, you shouldn't have problems dissipating because, yeah, th this is a... This is a, you know, pretty decent VRM design here. Uh, and in terms of actual, like, thermal resistance on all of these power stages, they're actually really low thermal resistance, so you don't have to worry about them, like, uh, like, they'll be good up to, say, a hundred, wait. Let's just pull up the bloody data sheet, because I didn't actually do the calculation for that, which I was considering doing, and then I was like, nah, and maybe I should have done it. Where is the bloody, there, that's the SIC. So these have a case uh, thermal resistance of, well, they have a TJ max of 150, but yeah, case thermal resistance of 1.6 uh, degrees per watt. Um, junction to ambient is actually just 10.6. So if you have 25 degree centigrade air above these, wait, where's the calculator? Oops. <laughs> Well, okay, let's just do some basic math. So, 60 watts, 12 phases. Yeah, I'm reversing the calculation backwards, but whatever. So that's 5 watts per phase. So if we plug that uh, thermal resistance from junction... Oh, no, but that's for, like, their ridiculous padding. This is cheating. That's the problem with all of these, like, power, like the, uh, MOSFET data sheets and power stage data sheets. They, when they give you a thermal, uh, like, junction to ambient... Uh, thermal resistance, um, what, what they actually like, th they specify that there's like this much copper around the power stage, which is like used for heat sinking the damn part, which is just like nobody actually does that. Nobody has one power stage with a like giant empty space around it to, to sink all of the heat for it. Um, well, actually, no, there might be some applications where that's useful, but like GPUs don't do that. And this thing does have a pretty, like, heavily spaced out VRM, so it shouldn't be too bad. But either way, um, the, yeah, so at 5 watts uh, heat um, output per power stage, you're going to see about an 8 degree difference between the uh, PCB around the thing and the actual internals. So if the VRM is at, like, 125 degrees then the internals of, like, the silicon inside the actual MOSFET should be at 100 and, uh, um, 133 degrees centigrade at uh, 420 amps output, 1.5 volts. So that's actually fine. That, that would actually run. That wouldn't blow up on you. So that's not too bad. Now, if somehow this card did scale beyond that to, say, 1.6 volts um, and 2700 megahertz, you'd probably be looking at about... Uh, why do I even bother writing? This is so cramped that even I can't read it. <laughs> this is... And I don't have it after YouTube compression. Well, whatever. You'd probably be looking at about 90 watts of heat dissipation for the whole VRM. So you'd actually still be able to probably sustain that at 125 watt, uh, at 125 degrees uh, VRM temperature because... Uh, 90 divided by 12 gives you 7.5 times the case to ju uh, junction to case. That's 12 watts each. So plus 125. There we go. That's only 137 internal. I mean, that's not great because if the MOSFET exceeds 150, um, you're looking at a thermal runaway. But this is still like pretty far away from that point. So yeah, th this could run actually pretty hot and you'd be fine for the most part. Um, according to the data sheet anyway, because it does say the ther like that's a really low thermal resistance to junction to case figure, but I, I think they're uh, they're they're considering the case like the actual PCB around it, not the not the the 
not the black ceramic packaging because that usually is not that great in terms of thermal conductivity. So yeah, basically as long as the VRM isn't well over 100 degrees, you don't really have to worry about it. But keeping it under 100, de uh, under 100 degrees with 90 watts of heat output, that's uh, this is a different story. But you could probably run liquid nitrogen on this because um, it is a 12 phase. It's reasonably spaced out. Um, it shouldn't really have any problems. You have a decent voltage controller. Admittedly, you know, it's not an international recti uh, international rectifier, but it's not like it's going to be a catastrophe with the NCP8124. Uh, and you can mod this thing really, really easy. Like, it's uh, it's your standard NVIDIA voltage controller. So you have VREF. Um, there is a current limit situation. Like, it does have a built-in current limits, uh, built-in current limiter. So what you might find if you really like went to town on this card is that the VRM would actually shut down under heavy loading. But again, that should be really uh, easy to remove because it's going to be like there's what there's uh, I've not completely read the data sheet yet, but there should be one like based off what I saw in the diagram. It looks like one of those uh, on semiconductor uh, voltage controllers where there's one resistor. And if you just replace it with a higher value resistor, you get way more current limit. If you remove it, it probably won't start, though. So there, there's a limit. You have to actually have that resistor there, but it you, you just need to make it bigger, which is kind of awkward because normally it's very like when you're modifying things, it's very easy to lower a resistance because you can just put something in parallel. But raising a resistance is actually hard. But yeah, um, it should still be pretty, uh, you know, relatively simple to modify. Now then, so, you know, the V-Core VRM, for what it is, like, it, it's an impressive, uh, you know, yeah, it's it's a decent V-Core VRM. There's not really anything for me to complain about. Now then, moving on to the memory VRM, this is a two-phase. The voltage controller is this thing right here. This is a RichTech RT816. It's a two-phase. It probably runs at 300 kilohertz switching frequency, um, which I should have mentioned what the NCP81274 can do. I think it goes up to 1.2 megahertz. And whoa, am I good? I actually remember the spec for this thing. Well, NCP, well, I think it's a series thing, but yeah, th this one's another 1.2 megahertz. That's a lot of NCP parts that are 1.2 uh, megahertz switching frequency max. Um, so th this VRM could actually be run at 500 kilohertz with the doublers, because obviously these cut your switching frequency in half. But, yeah, um, so RT8116 uh, on the memory VRM. Um, this thing's pretty basic. It integrates the drivers for the dual NFETs you have here. So this is actually a two-phase proper. Um, one, two, one, two. And you don't have four MOSFETs because and drivers because drivers are integrated into that. And this thing is a high side, which actually the high side's on the high voltage side, which so I'm putting that wrong. And low side in one. So yeah, these are dual NFETs. These are uh, Sino power. So I think ASRock uses these on a bunch of motherboards. These are SM7340s, I do believe. Yes, they are SM7340s. Um, these are pretty decent. Like, they're actually not that bad. They're kind of slow, but they are very low RDS on. So, you don't really have to worry about them, you know, like, yeah, they're not bad. Um, kind of mediocre. Well, actually, no, because they are really, really low RDS on. They're just not particular, like, exactly the fastest. Either way, uh, VMEM output voltage is 1.35 volts, because GDDR5X does run on lower voltage than GDDR5. Um, and normally you should be looking at about 25 amps of current output, at which point this VRM will produce, you know, 300 kilohertz switching frequency, 5 volts gate drive, just because I don't think they're driving it off of straight 12 volts. Um, and if they are driving it off of straight 12 volts, then you'll just get better efficiency than what I've just listed. So for 25 amps, you'd be looking at about 3 watts, and for 35 amps, which this is just like if you started overclocking, um, you'd be looking at about 4.5 uh, watts, which is still not bad. Like, th this should be able to dissipate that on its own. Honestly, um, this card would be, uh, like, if you don't want to buy a kingpin and you don't want to buy a, uh, like, if you don't want to buy some super top of the line, uh, like a Hall of Fame or something, the, and you just want, uh, you know, and you basically have cash to burn because of how expensive 1080 Ti's are the, at the best of times. 
and now especially how expensive they are but if you just felt like modifying a card like this would be a pretty thing uh pretty cool card to work on because this thing is super easy to work on because you have the super detailed data sheet the same is true for the rt8816 um the pcb is pretty open the voltage controller for like the ncp81274 uh, is actually on the back of the card so you don't even need to like take the card apart to get at it which i kind of find convenient um so yeah this thing would be really pretty easy to modify um th this thing would be annoying but generally speaking actually tweaking vmem on gddr 5 x doesn't do anything like it doesn't improve the overclocking capabilities uh on liquid nitrogen i have heard that they pump more uh memory voltage just to keep the memory chips warmer because this entire area of the pcb gets really really cold and a lot of memory chips don't appreciate getting particularly cold so yeah um it it gives you like a little bit of frequency but it doesn't really do much for actual overclocking and maximum safe voltage for that is i think like 1.55 i've read uh past that the memory chips start dying pretty quick so yeah you know nothing to complain about there um, if you're interested in lifting all of your current limits, there's shunts here and here and... Huh. I guess the PCIe one is on the back of the card again. Unless it's somewhere... Nah. Oh no, it's here. Interesting. They've decided to put it all the way. That is really odd. Actually, no, it's not. Well, no, it's not. But normally, like, they have a space here, so I would have expected it to be there. I didn't think they'd drag it all the way over here, but they did. Anyway... Doesn't really matter that much. Um, so yeah, if you want to short shunts with uh, liquid metal, that's them. Uh, keep in mind that if you're using liquid metal, liquid metal dissolves tin. So don't put a ton of it or uh, your shunts, w the, the tin, like the solder holding your shunts in place will actually dissolve into the liquid metal and your shunts will fall off and then the card stops working because uh, the shunts pass literally all of the 12 volt power that goes into your VRM. Now, if you want a more uh, reasonable way of dealing with the shunts, um, stacking the same value shunt um, at the same, like the same exact shunt and just stacking another one on top would give you a 100% increase in power limit because basically the card would see half the current um another option is that this chip right here is an ina3221 i've already done a video on the many ways that you can trick actually no i don't think i've done on the many ways but like i have a preferred way of dealing with it but you can basically put resistors across these uh capacitors and that'll also give you the same effect as uh doing it across the shunts because uh, basically these capacitors are used for smoothing out the voltage reading across one of these shunts um, and there's a bunch of resistors in parallel there so if you just put a resistor across one of these you can tweak your uh, voltage reading that way um, usually you'd be looking at resistors in the 10 ohm range just because the resistors going from this capacitor to the shunts are usually in that 10 ohm range so to get a reasonable division you need to use something in that same size range if it's too big it's not really going to make any difference to the actual measurement and if it's too small it's going to be like a dead short and uh, modern nvidia like 10 series nvidia cards if they don't detect a uh reasonable amount of power consumption they're going to go into safety mode assuming that the current monitoring system broke um so yeah but if you want to completely lit li you know instead of just like tricking the voltage controller and you want to actually make uh feed the voltage controller complete lies uh, you can set up a 12 volts to ground uh, divider and then disconnect the actual INA3221 from the shunts. Basically, you'd lift uh, some... I think it would be these two resistors, these two resistors, and these two resistors. You just take them off the card and then you do a 12 volts to, um, to ground um, voltage divider. So there. And basically... Um, you'd want the drop across this resistor in like the millivolts range because like five millivolts um, across one of these shunts, um, these are five milliohm shunts. So five millivolts drop across one of these equals, uh, gives you one amp. So you'd basically want to set up a five millivolt drop 
and then feed that into that and it would basically read okay that shunt is always at 12 watts of power consumption and you can basically trick the card into not seeing its uh power like not measuring power consumption at all um by feeding it um you know f completely fake values using a voltage divider from 12 volts to ground so yeah that's um uh, that's one mod you can do on here for the shunts so yeah that's it for the pcb i rather like the 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 card like it's really not bad as far as a pcb goes also um this right here is probably an integrated dc buck converter from anpec just because that's their logo if anybody's wondering anyway um yeah it's not a bad pcb you get a solid 12 phase v core vrm with a um you know acceptable voltage controller um a decent doubling scheme i mean there's worse doubling schemes out there. That This isn't the best one, but there's definitely worse out there. Um, you do actually get basically a proper 12 phase. So yeah, this is a, this is a pretty strong card um, in terms of uh, what, what you get on there. The memory VRM is acceptable. The V core is fine. Now it's not the most powerful thing out there, but it, I don't think like you should be okay with it even for like liquid nitrogen overclocking if as long as you get this enough airflow it should be fine um so yeah that that's it thanks for watching um i'm sorry that the quality was low, lower than ever but i just was like i haven't done one of these in ages so Yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below about how much this video freaking sucked. Um, and if you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a uh, Patreon, PayPal, there's also shirts, and you can buy old hardware I want to get rid of. Right now, there's some motherboards I want to get rid of. So you can find a link down uh, to all of that down in the description below. It is all one link, and then there's links to that, which takes you to a list of links to the other things, because that makes it easy for me to, to manage that when I want to add like another support option and updates all the videos at the same time. Anyway, um, that that's kind of that. Oh, and... Uh, I uh, know, I'll, I'll save that for a separate video that I'll do right after this. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, see, uh, wait, no, if you have any specific GPUs you'd like to see a PCB breakdown of, uh, you can leave that in a comment as well. So, yeah, that is now actually it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, uh, I've already done that, so uh, see ya next time. I'm so bad at outros, aren't I? Where is the mouse? There it is.